Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another skill capped World of Warcraft classic video. So, as you probably know, Classic World of Warcraft is going to be released in phases. Phase 1 saw Molten Core and Anixia, Diamond was pushed out with Phase 1.5, and now with Phase 2 just around the corner, it's going to be bringing world bosses in the form of Azurigus and Kazakh, and also the much anticipated Honor System. Our aim with this video is going to be breaking down how that honor system actually works, then covering all of the rewards you get from each rank obtained. Come the release of phase 2, you'll have access to your honor tab. Inside of this tab, you'll be able to easily see your daily, honorable and dishonorable kills. Your honorable kills and honor earned in both a daily and weekly total. And then even last week's HK's honor and also the standing on your server. And then also a roundup of your lifetime honourable and dishonourable kills, and even the highest rank you've ever earned. At this top pane, you'll also see a bar. This is almost like an XP bar. It will show your current rank and how close you are to achieving the next one. Once the bar fills up, you'll progress to the next rank. So anyway, before I explain how the honour system works, there are a few terms you should get familiar with. First is HK. HK stands for Honourable Kill. Now, killing any member of the opposing faction within your level range awards an Honourable Kill. So a level 60 player can get a HK from any player who's level 48 and above, as anything below that will make the enemy grey, and not an Honourable Kill. Now, Dishonourable Kills are one of the most important things to be aware of when ranking in the open world as a DK will penalise you by subtracting 100 rank points instantly. We'll get into more detail on rank points later on in this video. Dishonourable kills are given by slaying certain civilian NPCs. Not every NPC counts as a civilian, but things like important quest givers are marked down as civilians. You can tell if an NPC is a civilian by mousing over the target or targeting the NPC. This is to thwart high level players killing quest givers and stopping lower levels being able to complete quests. Our next point of topic is contribution points, known as CP for short. Each time you gain an honourable kill, you are rewarded with contribution points, but the amount you receive is based on a few factors. First is the slain player's PvP rank. We're getting to ranks shortly, but there are 14 different ranks in the system ranging from Private to Grand Marshal for the Alliance and Scout to High Warlord for the Horde. The higher rank the player is, the more contribution points you'll gain from killing them. It's simple. The level of the enemy player is also taken into account when calculating how much CP you gain from the kill. The lower level the player, the less CP you're going to be rewarded with. And your party size also factors into how much CP you get per honourable kill. For example, if you're in a group of five, and are rewarded with 100 CP for a kill, that 100 CP will be split evenly between all players in the party. Whereas if you're ungrouped and assist on kills, the CP will be split based on contribution. So whoever did the most damage slash healing in order for that kill to happen. And the last thing that factors into how much CP you gain for an honorable kill is how many times you've killed said player. After each time you've killed a player, the amount of honour you gain from killing them will decay by 25% after each subsequent kill. So kill 1 will be 100% of the honour, kill 2 75%, kill 3 50%, kill 4 25% and then the 5th kill and all kills after will reward 0 honour. Now these contribution points you've been gaining are every week then added up and are used to calculate your weekly standing. Based on this, you'll be put into a bracket. Which bracket you are placed in will reward you with rank points, RP for short. The higher bracket you get placed in, the more RP you'll be rewarded with. Now brackets are calculated by the percent of your faction who has achieved 15 honourable kills or more for the week. For example, bracket 1 is the highest you can reach, with a pool size of 0.3%, whilst bracket 2 is 0.8% and it gets more and more players the higher bracket and lower on the list you reach. So let's say you're playing Horde and there are 100,000 players who get 15 or more honorable kills for the week. 
This will mean that bracket one will have a pool size of 100,000 divided by 0.003%, which is 300 players, whereas bracket two will have 800 players and so forth. Inside of said brackets, you'll gain a set amount of rank points based on your standing inside of that bracket. So let's take bracket one for example. Bracket one rewards an RP ceiling of 13,000, whilst having a floor of 12,000 RP based on your standing. The highest point earner for the week will gain 13,000, whilst the lowest in bracket one will gain 12,000. Whereas on the other end of the spectrum, bracket 13 will be the top 0.845% CP earners and reward a floor of only 400 rank points. Now, the rank points you receive will then progress you to the next rank title. Every rank other than rank 1 to 3 needs 5k rank points to progress to the next one, with Grand Marshal and High Warlord requiring 60 rank points in total. Private and Scout requires only 15 honourable kills to achieve. Okay, so by this point you're probably thinking, just tell me how fast I can get rank 14. Well, something I'm yet to mention is Decay. Once you have more than 2,500 rank points, you will every week, once calculations are made, decay 20% of your total rank points. This is the main reason the vanilla rank system is so notoriously time consuming. So for instance, let's say you're the best of the best on your server and want to reach rank 14 the fastest way possible. If you was to reach stand in one in bracket one every single week, it would take you 12 weeks to reach the required 60k RP in order to reach rank 14. So to answer your question, 12 weeks of gaining the max RP possible without fail every single week. Okay then, so hopefully by now you've got a bit of a better understanding about how the rank system works. So let's now take a look at the fruits of your labour and take a look at the item rewards you gain for reaching each rank. Obtaining 15 honourable kills will reward you with the private title for Alliance and Scout for the Horde. This is the first rank and the rewards show that. All you gain is a faction tabard. Reaching 2k RP will reward you with Corporal or Grunt and unlock your class PvP trinket. Although unlike on retail, each class's insignia is different and will only dispel certain things. 5k RP gets you the Sergeant title, unlocking a high stamina and armor cape, and you also gain 10% discount on all faction vendors. Going up on increments of 5k RP, our next rank of Master slash Senior Sergeant will reward you with a blue necklace, again with high stamina. Now, rank 6 is a milestone, as it allows you to enter your much acclaimed Faction's Officer Barracks, where only players who are this rank or higher are allowed to enter, an Officer's Tabard and also access to cheap health and mana potions. Rank 7 gives you your first piece of your blue PvP set, the Boots and Gloves. Each class has their own unique set. Rank 8, Knight Captain for the Alliance and Legionnaire for the Horde, will reward players with their blue quality chest piece and legs, again part of each class's unique set. Now rank 9 is a little disappointing. Instead of any armour or gear, you instead get access to your faction's battle standard, rewarding nearby players with bonus health, which can be used in battlegrounds once they are released. But rank 10 is a big one, and gives players access to their rare quality helm and shoulders, completing your blue set. Requiring a whopping 45k RP, Commander or Lieutenant General allows you to purchase your PvP epic mount. Almost there now, rank 12 gives players access to the first three items of their epic set, which are gloves, legs and boots. And our penultimate rank and rank 13 gives players the last three pieces of their epic set, completing the epic set entirely. Now, these sets all have insane stats when it comes to PvP, high amounts of stamina and high amounts of your primary offensive stat. So that's helmet, shoulders and chest. And of course, our final rank, which is rank 14, the much acclaimed Grand Marshal or High Warlord, and it gives you access to your PvP weapons, 
these weapons are amongst the strongest in the game and are a worthy reward for such an insane grind. Alright then guys, that just about concludes this video. I hope you by now have a richer understanding of the classic honor system and all of the rewards involved. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.